at night. There we go. On that note, time to get into picks and bans. That's just because you left your PC on, Noah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well played. All right. I'll let you have that one. That was, that was a pretty good one. I'll let you have that one. I'm not even going to try to respond. That was good. That was good. I don't even have a computer in my bedroom, but I'm going to let that one go. <laughs> Subtle. Grog is banned after that uh, Zed ban against Mickey. Yeah, no surprise. I assume we're going to see an Ari ban too at some point in here, especially on blue side. You have the bans to use. Just prevent him from going nuts on that champion. And it looks like we may be seeing some jungle bans because Hojin undoubtedly has something crazy to show us. Oh, good. I can't wait. It better be something crazy and not just like Nautilus or something, you know? There's Rise. Band out, standard stuff here. And so what's the final band going to be? What is Ku going to try to take, or try to pick up for Anarchy? Let's ban the Ari. Don't deal with it if you don't have to. That's my idea. And Mickey Zari has been one of his better champions for sure. That's the new Ku coach standing in the booth now, by the way, the one they picked up to work more on uh, micro play. Yeah, mechanics coach. Yeah. So Kogma. The final ban, interesting. The Juggerbot team banning the Kog'Maw, okay, whatever. Well, you know, Sonyun has played a decent amount of Kog'Maw lately, and the thing is, is when he, well, when he plays, he just doesn't seem to die a lot, even if they lose, which is most of the time. He has a pretty good stat line. So if you don't want to deal with it, there's a Callista ban. And what is the plan for Ku Tigers? We may see them style a bit. Victor pick. Yeah. Of course, you take that. It's Kuro's best champion. Yep. You know, it's very weird to see in Korea that it's Kogmo instead of Ma. Ah, Kogmo. 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 Yeah. It's Mo. And I have a theory about this. You ready? What? Because Koguma is sweet potato in Korean, and I think that it would be too. It would sound like sweet potato. Yeah, that's if true. If they actually spelled it Ma, a Ma instead that's of true. Mo. It's a different. Uh, it's a different consonant at the beginning. But it would be even it more would be, similar. It would be similar. That's true. <laughs> I'm just going to call Kogma sweet potato from now on. That's my plan. So Alistar Sivir would be a, a solid set of champions for Anarchy to select. Better than the core kid, thing. I-M-O. Yeah, go ahead and take that Corky away from Prey. He's something like... 37 and 13 all time on that champion. It is his most played in his competitive career. And he's built up a pretty impressive win rate on it. And now they're going to oh choose an Ezreal, actually, which is another old Prey classic if they don't want to use it in the mid lane. Yeah. Which they're going to just take it for 80 carries. So they're going to deny the Ezreal pick from Mickey and just say, all right, we're just going to use it as 80 carry. Yeah, and Prey is, like you mentioned, been playing that Ezreal down at AD carry for years and years and years. Oh boy, do we get to see his pulse fire Ezreal? Maybe. The famous Prey scouter ceremony. Yep. Well, there's TF and Echo picked up. Yeah, so jungle Echo. Clear's been playing likely, And there's the TF. I like this out. pick for, for Anarchy. It does two things. So we talk about Mickey, we talk about Anarchy. Two things must occur. Mickey must have backline threat. Well, once he gets Sonya's Hourglass, check for TF. Mickey must roam and affect the other lanes. Oh, TF, check. So that hits the necessary boxes for Anarchy to have a successful game. Rom Rumble, though. The pickups for Ku. Will it be that's, that Fizz maybe going to the top lane? Yeah, and like I said, hmm. the, the Fizz, TF, when they have these carry top laners, they generally tend to do better. Yeah. Um, I don't know how Fizz is against Rumble. Usually we see him against tanks that require some items like Maokai or maybe even Hecarim to really get rolling. I think it'd be kind of painful for Fizz to just walk right into that Flame Spitter. And dodge a little bit of the damage with the Playful Trickster, of course, but he'd still be taking a decent amount, you'd think. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. And Rumble very strong on this patch, too. Yeah. Getting that really a major beneficiary of the Leandris buffs. And Going for the Maokai. Makes a bit more sense. Not having that carry threat, but they do have very reliable ganks between Maokai and TF. Yeah. Well, even Echo helping a little bit with that, too. Oh, yeah. 
Maokai Echo is another very strong gank because basically if you time it right, you just wait for the parallel convergence to come down. Maokai yep. roots them in there. Echo phase dives in. There's an extended stun. So uh, Smeb's going to have to be super careful, super careful on this rumble. I just noticed Praise Kermit illustration is doing the, uh, the scouter thing from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> That's great. He is Love very it. famous. And I think... Uh, I think it was this patch that Pulsefire Ezreal's animations were updated, so he doesn't yeah, feel quite right. so clunky. It was, yeah. They tightened up the animations a little bit. So if Prey decides to go with that skin, he will be better situated than ever to bring the pain. Yeah, and uh, Koot Tigers here. Got a great mid-game composition. Got some solid engage from the flanks. And Koot Tigers are a team that flanked very well with Evelyn. Yep. Anarchy has a strong front line here for Mickey and Sung Yoon to do some work in the back. They don't even have to have Mickey build the Zonias if he doesn't want to. And we'll see how they can hold up against the Tigers. Can they take Kuro's professional undefeated streak on Victor and give him that first loss? That would be pretty amazing. Rebels Anarchy has gotten some upsets before, but Ku Tigers seem to be on quite the roll aside from the uh, misstep against SK Telecom. We'll see if they can take out that anger against Rebels Anarchy here in game number one. It's time to get in the game and find out. All right, welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. Game one between the Koo Tigers and Rebels Anarchy. The Koo Kermits, that's what I meant to say there. Whoops, sorry. I mean, we can just change names whenever we want to now. Anarchy to Rebels Anarchy. Koo Tigers to Koo Kermits. I think Kermit may, they may run into copyright issues. Well, not in Korea, but in other places they may. Have to change their name before they go to Worlds or an international event. That's, that's right. The <laughs> They would change like the, the Koo Green Puppet Frogs. <laughs> yep. I think the Koo Gonzos has a nice <laughs> ring to it. If you're going to go with a Muppet, man, go with that Muppet. That's right. Okay. Well, nothing too interesting going to be happening at level one, it would appear. Another Ezreal game. We'll see if he goes the same way as Bangs Ezreal and for a tier build in this one. Gorilla laughing uh, fiendishly in the brush. Brom gets very excited sometimes. I, if I had a mustache well. like that, I would get very excited too. Yeah, why don't you grow one? I, I can't grow a mustache oh. like that. Though. You can get like a, a fake nope. one. A fake one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mustache or, implants. Or implants. I mean, <laughs> they've got to have like some plastic surgeon that does mustache implants here in, here in Seoul. They've got everything else. One could only assume. Yeah. Oh boy, it's not Super Galaxy Rumble. I love it. No, it's the, uh, the island coconut pineapple <laughs> rumble skin or something. I don't know. I feel like if, if Tom Hanks in that movie Castaway built like a, a robot to ride around the island, and it, it looked like that. I think that's the plan. That's the idea there. That movie would have been way better if they would have had that too. Mickey taking the Raptors. Just get a little bit of an XP boost here in lane. Up, oh, and they're going to be uh -oh. punished immediately for trying to take this Grom. Yeah, he's just going to walk up. That man. is so annoying. Oh boy. And oh, did he? He nope, nearly got, got that. It. Oh, it was close. Snowflower took a lot of damage though. Yep, nice delay, and now we see Ixu getting low in the top side. Wants to go for that level two, so oh, we don't really see the dual lanes going for the Gromp that early on. But Gorilla peeks his head in, finds out what they're up to, and is minorly disruptive. The hope of every support player to be minorly disruptive. It's about all the power they have, Noah. Sadly, <laughs> you know, until until uh, Riot lets us start being damage supports. Someday. I hope so. You know, Doa, you just need to change your role to carry. There's no such thing as a damage support. It's called <laughs> Oh, there carry. is. There <laughs> is, man. There is definitely a damage support. Yep. Wow. Nice poke from Kuro onto Mickey, and you got to imagine it's going to be a little bit difficult early on. Yeah. Kuro is 12-0 all time on this champion. Yep. So. Oh, hi. Just gonna oh, delay the Jim. recall. Oh, he senses danger. <laughs> He's Mickey sense with tingling. That's right. That's why he had his like hand up to his forehead. He's like, I sense danger. 
I'm still sensing danger. <laughs> <laughs> Hoja's just trying to figure out if he's recalling or not. Suspicious. Yeah. Oh. He's here to pop out with a blue card. Why not? Just getting a bit more XP, letting himself passively regenerate some health. There you have it. It says 11 right there, but he actually had to win an MSI too, and this doesn't oh. include international statistics. So that's why it is a bit different. That makes sense. But the carry rating. The damage per game. Yeah. Well, Hojin getting poked a little bit early by Lyra as he tries to take the Raptor camp. Uh oh. Busy time winding. Oh, Mickey. Here comes Smeb. They get the slow. Uh -oh. That's a lot oh, of damage. Mickey okay. flashes, flash it for Kuro, and first blood goes over to Smeb. Nice play. Well, meanwhile, in the bot lane, things getting aggressive on Anarchy as well. Prey, though, getting very, very low. Exhaust and the flash kill from Song Yun. So Anarchy strikes back almost immediately in the bot lane. Yeah, able to pick up that kill, coming in onto Prey as they were overextended while they were giving knowledge of where their top laner was. And Smeb managed to sneak into mid lane for that first blood kill. Nicely done. But at the same time, it is answered. Prey is going for a tier this game. So he's going to have a delayed power spike compared to Sang Yoon. Uh-oh. Game time up in top lane. Ixu could be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to twist and advance onto Hojin. I mean, should be. he's not going to die. Well, thanks for ruining the hype again. Hype killer Monte Cristo back. <laughs> back after our first series. <laughs> Took a break, but now he's returned. Hey, I killed plenty of hype in the first series. Hey, don't don't be salty just because KT lost again. <laughs> I know that's I, I know you're them feeling to lose. that way. <laughs> it still hurts, so I can tell. Yeah. Well, I saw you sobbing well. quietly into your tie <laughs> behind backstage. That's what the happened. Break. Yeah, that's what happened between the the two <laughs> series. But I got it out of my system. That's right. It's okay. I've already gone through all of the stages of grief. I'm I'm back <laughs> in acceptance. You really? I suppose you really would have gone through through all those during the uh, summer finals from 2013 <laughs> more than any other time. That was really the worst worst time to be a KT fan. I've realized that the truth of the universe is that KT doesn't go to Worlds. <laughs> it's true. Somehow Najin's gonna make it again and then like lose immediately and they're like, oh no, why? Uh oh, wanna make a play on Mickey again? He's got no flash this time, but he's playing much, much safer. That's, you know, that only happens to Najin, though, because uh, Watch actually uh, made a wish on a cursed monkey paw, <laughs> uh -huh. and he was like, I want to be the best jungler in the world. <laughs> and then the, the curse is that he can only be the best jungler in the world for the month immediately prior to Worlds. Yep. That's why you don't <laughs> make wishes on cursed monkey paws. That's true. That's right. It's dangerous stuff, man. Every year we hear tales of the terror that is Watch in solo queue. Hojin flashes out into his advance, who appears again. And Hojin's gonna go back towards the wolf camp. Yeah, they're gonna chase him. They're gonna slow down Lyra. Kuro coming in as well too. Lyra could be in trouble. That's a lot of damage. And Hojin helps Kuro pick up that kill with the Chaos Storm. Yeah, nice job just boxing him in right there, making yep. sure that they weren't going to be able to have an effect. Uh -oh. There's an equalizer going down. They get a flash for it. Nice trade. A flash for Ixu. Not really sure that flash was necessary for Mixu. Kuro had no mana there, so there I don't know if there was enough damage to really follow that up, but apparently mm -hmm. Ixu, a little bit concerned, but they are doing a good job of controlling Anarchy. That was a bit of a overly aggressive invade coming in from Lyra. He's trying to push the advantage that he had found against Hojin from here earlier, especially since, oh boy, he's going Runeglaive Echo. That is huh. new, and I don't think that good. I'm trying to think of, like, I guess, does Timewinder proc it? No. I wouldn't think so. Um, no, I mean, it gives him more AP, and it certainly well, gives yeah. him more burst damage. But with the new Devourer that came out this patch. Oh, that, that item is just, I don't know if we're going to see that in competitive play. It takes a long time to farm, just like the, uh, the old farm item did in the jungle. And you just, it leaves you in a giant power trough for mm. a really, really long time, so. The new Feral Flare. Yeah, that and Feral Flare was either way too powerful or way too underpowered. You couldn't really find a good sweet spot there in terms of balance for it, I think. It seemed that way, yeah. Uh, this is 
this is very interesting. I mean, I think that Echo is very strong in terms of his ability to actually tank. And so why would you not have a Cinder Hole? Because we take a look at two pink quartz right there. Well, I think it's just part of the whole uh, pick potential, right? I mean, if you have an Echo that does more damage than usual. Shrug. <laughs> But he's also just going to be what? Why you? Okay, let's let's talk about Echo for a second. When he gets really tanky, the advantage that Echo has is that he can constantly stand in the front of team fights, which means that you can just slap your parallel convergence down in the front line, and you don't have to be fancy yeah. about phase diving into it or anything like that. You just put it on top of yourself, and your carries stand behind you, and you stand there and take some poke, and then they can't get back to the carries. If you have to put it in advance, you can't body block, you can't serve as a front line, and you're not as reliable with the W. Hmm. So he really is, due to his insane CC and shield, very well suited to be a Cinder Hulk jungler just to provide utility. But it's a lot riskier to play with something like a Rune Glaive onto the Echo. Oh, trying to go on on Mickey. Mickey with the gold card loaded up. Here comes Lyra. They catch Hojin with the parallel convergence, but Gorilla there to block a lot of damage. Snowflower trying to come in as well, but it doesn't look like there's going to be a follow-up. Close call for Mickey, but Anarchy manages to keep him alive. They had a back line there, and Mickey at the very least is chunked out right now. Has some more time just to use some pots, but they keep him locked down, and they don't have to worry about gates, particularly into that top lane where it's very dangerous. But if Lyra's going to build like this, they have to make plays with this Echo because he'll be valuable in skirmishing, but pretty not great in team fights. They do, that said, have a big front line with the Maokai and the Alistair already, so it's not the end of the world. It's not like they don't have tanks to be builds like this. Maybe that's kind of the assumption, too, is that they need just a bit more damage. They have enough tankiness already, theoretically. Oh, nearly catching Lyra there. And so, things a bit calm for the moment, anyway. We'll see who takes the first strike. Yeah, well, Ku Tiger is happy that things are calm, though. They want to just sit here with his Ezreal, have no threat, allow him to get farmed up and into the late game. Yep. Very true. And that mid lane turret's already taking a lot of damage too. So when that gets poked down, that's gonna be kind of an easy time to grab Dragon. Yeah, Mickey also having to go for those home guarded chants to make sure, like you're saying, that it doesn't go down. Yep, needs to get back in lane as fast as he can. Interesting that he's running Ignite here instead of that Ghost. I really just prefer Ghost. I think it's more reliable in most situations. So Lyra will get chased off a of pink ward. And that's about it. Not, yep. not too exciting. Not too much, no. Well, it looks like Runeglaive was finished for Lyra. So he's got that going for him anyway. Yeah, it's also that, I mean, Echo was nerfed in terms of his AP damage. Yeah. makes it even less appealing. Well, we'll see what he can do with it a little bit later. He has been able to grab a kill so far anyway. But this is going to be this is going to be maybe a little bit of a farming game for a while here. Yes. Yep. Yes, it will be. Well, like you said, because uh, well, who would like to dictate that? Yep. And also, even Anarchy, uh, they haven't been able to make plays with the Twisted Fate thanks to Kuro owning the laning phase. And then they're waiting for Corky to get Trinity Force. It's like Mickey will be going for the Lich Bane first, so they're going to start setting up a split push, which is basically all Anarchy does is 1-3-1 one, one, or split push with Mickey. That is pretty much their only strategy. They, they went very heavily for it in their last best of three against Samsung. They didn't actually end up winning that game. Samsung had some decent shot calling to all in the Baron and other objectives to prevent them from putting down too much pressure. It's very hard to play 1-3-1 in the current meta because you so rarely will be able to actually crack the base with a split push. Right. Now well, there's just gonna take out this Rift Scholar, so it does look like Anarchy's trying to set something up for maybe a dragon here, but 
It's just going to be so difficult. They can push up the bot lane. Not the greatest amount of wave clear for Ku in the duo lane, but can they transition that into a dragon? Kind of doubtful. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason for them to go for a dragon immediately. They're going to clear out the pink ward, get a ward down of his own, but he's too late to actually do anything about stealing a buff. And Mickey still hasn't had a port. I mean, there's there's just nothing he's actually been able to do effectively so far this game. Yeah. Now, blue buff's going to go over to Mickey. You know, it'd be really annoying to be Echo and have that, like, ghost time spirit thing following you around, you know? Like if you're if you're like late for a meeting and it, everyone's like you know really quiet because they're trying to listen on like the teleconference thing, you like you open the door really loudly and you come in, you sit down, and it's like oh sorry guys, and then like five seconds later, your your like time self comes in and does it again. Everyone's like oh Echo, why can't you just be on time? Ironic. Well, and Kuro tries to make a play, but here comes Lyra. Can he get another kill? He can, but he may pay for it. No, gets out with the alt. Right on time that time. Yeah, and Mickey actually makes that ignite work. The all-in from Kuro fails. He actually was able to cleanse the gold card, but Lyra had enough follow-up damage, likely thanks to the rune blade. Uh -oh. But here we go. Equalizer, a lot of damage on the Mickey on the Lyra. Lyra trying to go in onto Hojin. There's a kill though for Smeb, trying to get to Mickey, but Ixu teleports down as well too. Oh, here comes Gorilla, misses his Q, and with the gold card, Mickey will get out despite the ignite. Yeah, barely living there, health potion ticking away. And that means that the Ku Tigers at least equalize that kill. And not only that, but they get a TP advantage too. Yep. So Ray with no two shot barrage was on cooldown. Sad times, could have finished Mickey off. Yep, that's right. That's gonna be it. No more shenanigans for the moment. Lyra looks like he's going to be building uh, Tanky after the Rune Glaive, so going for an Aegis. Hmm. So just a bit more burst via the Sheen, I suppose. Yeah, so at least he's building Tanky after that. That will help quite a bit. Sung Yoon, not quite going to be able to poke out that tower. Does have that Trinity Force. Ray completes his Blade of the Ruined King, so he will be a bit stronger in that dueling department if he has to deal with somebody getting into the back line. Seems like a pretty quick blade, but considering he started tier, but I suppose it is about on time with the CS. Yep. Feels quick. Pretty normal timing here. Now Lyra coming into the uh -oh, top side. Big gank on the top. There's a gold card onto Smeb. Ixu trying to make a play as well. Smeb turning around, and he oh, seems very tanky already, but he's still going to get taken out. Mickey grabs a kill there. Equalizer burned at the last moment, but not make a big difference. Curl's going to take mid lane turret, and the rest of Q are going to take Dragon, though. Yeah, and not worth it. You have to anticipate that gank if you're spent. But I mean, he has TP up right now. He's not going to lose any CS because he was, well, he's going to lose one wave, maybe. Yeah. He was pushed pretty far forward. And Q just very punishing. They, they get an ult out of Mickey, and they get a turret, and. They get a dragon, all for the price of Smeb. Now, Smeb playing it a bit risky, pushing that far forward, but at the same time, Anarchy has such a great team composition for ganking him, in particular in the top lane, that you kind of have to expect that he's going to die at least once in the laning phase. Yeah, it's not too surprising. Still able to pick up that Leandris fairly quickly, which is a little bit stronger than it was before because of all the AP item changes. Yep, got a little bit more AP there. Yep. So Rumble, who loves to build that Leandris anyway, is going to be quite happy with that item. Oh, yeah. And with the high base damage that Rumble has to begin with, it's pretty good. Uh-oh, he may need all of it, though, trying to get away. Oh, oh Headbutt Pulverize missed, though. Smab makes it out. I felt like they uh, maybe could have chased a bit longer. But with Hojin coming up, that yep. hurts, man. To miss your combo, ouch. <laughs> miss the combo does happen from time to time. But in that case, they invested so many people into the top side to try and make that gank work. And that was a lot of time and energy. And now Ku just, again, reasserting their control of the map right now, pushing up that mid wave. And this is starting to get scary because Kuro has been unleashed. He can get kills onto the side lanes now if he wants to, grabs that blue buff. And TF at his tier two is at his worst. He needed to get into a side lane as fast as possible to split push with this Lich Bane, and that's just not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, he's got he got a couple kills, but 
Seems like he was right on the edge of being able to have enough. But he can't threaten anybody now because his ult isn't long enough to really effectively deal right. with side lane ganks as long as he is pushed up to his tier two. Loses a lot of freedom when it comes to using Destiny and Gate. Pretty much, and now they're gonna try to catch Mickey again. Gold card though onto Hojin, keeps Mickey safe. No real follow up from Kuro. Interesting decision to use the ult there. I think he thought Kuro was closer, so a bit of a miscommunication there, I think, on the coup side. Since there's no dragon to really push Mickey back to base for or anything like that. Just go back to lane. Your coup, you already got the first dragon. You're still going to have some very insane scaling with Victor, and a blue build Ezreal isn't a slouch in terms of late game damage either. Of course. So back to standard lanes. Aren't you excited? But oh yeah. Standard lanes is perfect for Ku. As long as they don't have to deal with split push twisted fate then they're going to be feeling very comfortable. They came in yeah. knowing that Anarchy loves to run the TF. They love to split push with it. It's served them well in certain situations. And don't give it to them in a manner which they're going to be able to execute their game plan. So first, there was, first pick the victor. There was a window that Anarchy had, and that window is more or less already closed. Well, uh, yeah. Just kind of play patiently now. There weren't any early ganks really by the TF, and when the ganks came, they gave up so much yeah. just for a kill onto Smeb, which is absolutely not worth it in any sensibility. Still trying to gain a little bit more vision on the map, and man, Prey has kept this turtle alive for a long time, but now he's gonna have to try to keep himself alive. Ah, uh, yes, the gank is coming. He saw a ward yep. go down there at the Krugs. Now he knows that there are a bunch of people in his tri brush. So this may be it. Although he does have True Shot Barrage to clear out the minion wave. And now, gonna threat the top side. Oh yeah, that's right. Smeb could be in trouble yet again. Drops the equalizer, it really doesn't hit anybody. And Mickey going for another kill. Ixu manages to grab that one. And so they found an opportunity at a time when the Ku Tigers really couldn't take anything in response. Yep. Well, and they got deep wards into the bottom side simultaneously, so yep. nice job by Anarchy to rest a little bit more control of this game away from the Ku Tigers. But that said, again, very easy lane to gank. Maybe Smeb is playing a bit too aggressively right now, a bit too far up. And yeah, Ixu could take a top lane turret. That would be very nice for Anarchy. Yeah, looks like he'll get it. And Anarchy jumps out to a little bit of a gold lead even here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Well, the Tigers are very good at playing from behind, so. Yeah. Uh-oh. Hoji getting very far back right now. <laughs> Basically, Mickey has to abandon his own jungle for fear of getting trapped there. 50 seconds until this dragon goes down. Ku starting to set up around the objective. They've already got all the vision they'll need directly around the parent pit anyway. It's just a couple of the deep wards in their own jungle that they need to kind of worry about. And you'd imagine they know that there's some in there. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're aware. Now the question is, do they care though? Because yeah. Muramana is finished for Prey already. So he's in a pretty nice power spike right now compared to the Corky who's still working on the Bloodthirster. Yeah. Well, Snowflower is zoning out Ku just a bit as Anarchy tries to go for their first dragon of the game. Smeb's going to get a lot of damage done to this turret, too. Yeah, they just want to delay it as long as they can. Yeah. See if they can get a turret and it still be there for the dragon fight. Pings down onto the tier one. Ku has to move down into the bottom side right now. Oh, oh here we go. Ixu pops that ultimate. It's still very tanky. Ah, uh, they got the tower, though. That was nice from yeah, Anarchy. Yeah, up in turrets, too. And now Mickey can do more damage in mid, too. I mean... I guess Ku responds with the top lane turret, but Anarchy seems to be doing a pretty good job of maneuvering around the map and taking turrets because of yeah, it. Yeah, they are. And that Lich Bane just did a lot of work onto the mid lane tower. You can't leave Twisted Fate alone with your turrets for very long. Not too much damage with the Death Ray yet. Yeah, very true. Oh, they catch Mickey. Mickey tries to get out. True Shot Raj goes through, doesn't hit him. Drill a little bit low. Here comes Maokai on top of everyone. Nice knockup. 
from Snowflower. Ku needs to play this so carefully. Equalizer comes down, traps a lot of Anarchy members, and Hojin just hammering away, gets the kill onto Ixu for Prey. Kuro walking ahead with that Chaos Storm, and here comes Gorilla blocking some damage, allowing Ku to advance onto the Dragon, and Kuro picks up another one onto Song Yun and Mickey. On the run now, Ku Tiger is going to get their second dragon. And Anarchy wanted to go for that, but the zone control for the Ku Tigers was so well played. Uh, Smeb held onto his equalizer for the right amount of time. So once Maokai committed in through that choke, the Ku Tigers just kept abilities in the choke the entire time. And Kuro was constantly threatening from the flank. If they tried to get their damage close enough, that Victor would just blow them up. Yep. So very good team fighting from the Ku Tigers. They fought exactly where they wanted to, and now they're going to reap some major rewards. Get another outer turret. Smeb there just holding on. And just like that, going from about 2K down to about 1K up now over Anarchy. So catching up and then some as Smeb defends this mid lane turret for now. Yeah, it looks like he is going to, Mickey, that is, he's going to back off, so they don't want to just overextend. Anarchy, though, again, great warding. We see this team, they play well around Vision, that is true. They constantly are getting the wards that they need. They just don't have the execution around that Vision or the right decisions all the time. Yeah. Well, Mickey getting that quick Zonias too. I mean, they're really doing everything they can to position themselves to make some sort of a comeback anyway. And it is still a very close game. Yeah, it, the problem is, is that even if Mickey gets into the back line, how much can he realistically get done? Yeah, I mean, Kuro can just blow him up. Prey can get away. Yeah. That's, that's about it. Has to try to hope for a pick. Yeah, Missile Scepter for Smeb now. Uh, that's a very efficient item against Anarchy. There's not really much that can not be blocked by having that magic resist this game against Anarchy's composition. The only thing you're actually worried about is uh, Sangyu. And even he is playing from a little bit behind right now without that Bloodthirster. So compared to Prey, who is already working on that last Whisper, yeah, Ku looking pretty good at the moment. Oh, uh, huh. Oh, that was not the right button. So, uh, yep. Oops. He uh, had his Zonias in the wrong place. He was trying to ward right there. It was a uh, style warding. I guess so. The fanciest ward ever put down. How did our observer hit that? <laughs> <laughs> he misses nothing. Yeah, zonias will be up fairly soon. We'll see if it's we'll, fe we'll see if that ends up being a, a problem for them. Uh, likely won't. I don't think we're yeah. we're going to see a fight here before that Zonia's Hourglass can come back up. So you're warding totems on four. How do you accidentally hit one? Well, you assume that they don't have custom hotkeys, though. Yeah, probably. Probably gotta be, what? Gotta be changing it. Yeah, I mean, you're probably yeah, right. Yeah. Mo uh, most pro players don't play with standard hotkeys. So. I mean, everybody changes up a little bit, but. Back to wave clearing. The oh, most yeah. Most exciting part of League of Legends. No, it's not. Where you're the Koo Tigers and you don't want to get TF ulted behind you, so you just sit next to your tier twos because you know you'll be winning team fights in a 5v5. Yeah, wait, the, wait oh, for the waves yeah. to come to you. This just is ride how you, the wave. This is how you play smart League of Legends against Twisted Fate, but it's really boring. Oh. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Disappointed Prey didn't use the Pulse Fire Ezreal skin. Yeah, he's using that spelunking Ezreal skin. Yeah. I don't know if that's actually the name or not. Spelunking Ezreal? Spelunking Ezreal. I think it's some spelunking. underground explorer Ezreal. Something like that. They, tar they, they th started with Caveman, but that didn't actually have the right connotation. <laughs> well. He doesn't look like a caveman at all. He looks like a man who could be in a cave. I don't know what you're Just talking about. Man in cave, Ezreal. <laughs> <laughs> well, here comes Anarchy trying to take this turret down, but the big shield from Gorilla is going to prevent a lot of damage from coming in. It's so annoying to have to deal with that. Braum just there. 
taking all that damage from the turret. Yep. Mickey finally finds himself in a split push situation, but it's not going to be that effective because right now, due to the fact that the outer ring of turrets has not been completely killed and Ku still holds the center of the map, it's harder for, for them to get deep wards in against the Ku Tigers for him to actually deal damage to a tier two. Well, yeah, you can see Kuro just coming right down. Yeah, as long as Ku control the center of the map, there's a limited amount of split pushing that Anarchy can do safely. Wow, Flea. Snowfire taking a lot of damage, has to pop that ultimate. Lyra trying to get in the back lines. Teleport coming in. Wow, they get the kill on the Lyra very quickly. Two shot problems not doing a whole lot. That's a big equalizer, though, coming in for Smep. And Hojin just pounding people with those hate spikes. Gorilla manages to pick up the kill on the Snowflower. It's a portal combat, and Ku want to follow it up. Prey flashing ahead. Oh, Gorilla with the double kill. Nice. <laughs> Stole that one. The Braum I double. Approve. Coming through in the end. Well, Ku Tigers right there. They baited out that uh, Twisted Fate ultimate. Basically, Anarchy just should have disengaged after Snowflower got poked out and had to blow his ultimate because everybody from Ku just went right onto the high ground. We take a look at this. I mean, they're just out of position, and... Then we see the Twisted Fate. That is so easy for everybody to get out of. Again, Ku fighting around this exact same choke point. Smab's going to come in, get the Equalizer down. Here's Hojin. By the way, Victor isn't even a part of this fight. And they still lose. And look at this, flash forward for the last concussive blows proc. There you go. And Ooh. a totally unnecessary Winter's Bite, courtesy <laughs> of Gorilla. What are you talking about? He could have gotten away. Just got to make sure he's slowed. It's, it's complete accident that you get the kill with it. <laughs> Get the double kill with it. That's right. It's pretty amazing for Braum to get a double kill, actually, because he does, like, literally zero damage. He's got Ignite, though, so that helps. Yeah. It was already used, though. That was pure skill. Pure skill shot. <laughs> pretty sure he got that first kill with Ignite, but... Could be, yeah. <laughs> right. Could have been. Back to mid lane shenanigans. Yeah. So Lyra picked up the bombing cinder after getting the Rune Glaive enchant. So maybe going to build into a Sunfire Cape at some point. Definitely, because he has a cloth armor too, which will turn into a chain vest. So yeah. that is a very odd Ezreal build for the jungle. Not sure that is great, honestly. Echo. But he has to have some armor now. Although he's got his locket already, so he's got AP or MR rather. It's just, it, if you have to go for the armor now, why would you build Sunfire? For the clear. To steal dragons. <laughs> well, third dragon goes to the Ku Tigers. It's just that Frozen Heart and Randuids are a lot better in almost every situation than a Sunfire Cape, unless you really need that wave clear like Shen does. Oh, that turret just took a decent amount of damage just in the few seconds that they were there. Oh, they're going to try to make a play here. Nice big knockup from Snowflower. Equalizer comes down on top of the entire Anarchy team, though. Mickey Zonias, will he live through it, though? Snowflower manages to pick off Prey. Couple kills coming in for Anarchy. Can they finish this one off? No, Hojin doing way too much. Man, they spent a lot of time on that Equalizer. And Ku coming in. Kuro with the double kill. And he's not done yet. Really <laughs> wants that triple on the Song Yoon, but... Oh, 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 close. Yeah, Kuro not getting another Q off, but basically they tried to engage on a Kuro right there. Kuro waited for Mickey to hit the back line and then just used a full combo on him, meaning that Mickey just had a sliver of health left, was yeah. easily killed after completing the Zonia's stasis. Well, watch so, this equalizer, I too. mean, it's a nice attempt here by Anarchy. Just go in, try and make a play while you can. Bray gets knocked down the back line, but look, Mickey here has no mana. Barely living long enough to Zonia's, and that doesn't really matter because he wakes up in the middle of a gravity field and a chaos storm. And then Kuro has a Lich Bait here, so he can just move through to clean up the rest of this team fight. He's got a lot of speed with his Q. My favorite part was how Echo uh, Chrono broke right back <laughs> into victor range to die. Yep. It's not why you use your time rewinding, Echo. You don't do it so you can die. No, that's like the opposite of what you want. He doesn't deserve a single second. Make use of it that time. No, he didn't even get a second. He got like 0.1 seconds. Millisecond. He'll do better next time, maybe. He won't. 
It'd be sad if there's like an echo and he just gets worse each time. And doing it's like, oh, I give up. <laughs> He wants to go back only four seconds anyway. That's the world's worst time machine. Yeah, I'm trying to think of why you would. I don't, I don't know. Dodge something, I guess. Hit somebody with something. <laughs> all the all the echo type things, really. But it doesn't help you like go back and change the numbers you picked for the lottery or anything, you know. Nope. It's not really that useful, is it? Not really. Maybe if you could find some sort of betting that only took four seconds to complete <laughs> to have the outcome. Maybe. It'd be hard to find something like that, though. Maybe a... Well, what, what oh. happens if you, like, go back four seconds, then you just hit the button again? You go back another four, and you just, like, keep But you can't, because it's on cooldown. Oh. Sorry. You can only go back four seconds every couple of minutes. Oh, that's really not useful then. The uh, echo in the cinematic was not the echo we got in the game, was it? No. You just use that I mean, time rewinder over and over again. It's not It's not even really useful it, if you think about it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Destiny. Uh, just a, just hey, a Baron you want to see where they are, yeah. yeah. Just Baron check. So it's not, even that, it's not even going back in time because no one else moves. Hmm. He's not even... He's not even going back in time. He's just going back to where he was. All it does is track his movement. It doesn't actually have anything to do with time at all. That's true. We need a warning in these champion cinematics now. <laughs> it's like actual champion may not match. Yeah. Do you, do you know? A champion. Do you know that in that cinematic, did you notice that he okay. actually does go back in time because yeah. the enemy resets in time too? Right. That doesn't even happen in the game. Not it's really. not like everybody goes back to where they were. That would basically, be awesome. Basically, his, he's, he's a charlatan. His time rewinder is, isn't actually a time rewinder at all. The only thing it does is track where he was four seconds ago, and then movement displaces him. It's it true. displaces him in space, not in time. Wow. It has nothing to do with time. Wow. This is a very touchy subject for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I think we found a champion that you dislike more than Shen even, maybe. In terms of practicality. I just think he echoes a liar. Apparently. He just names his stuff like chrono break, time winder. It's not anything. He's just he's a snake oil salesman. <laughs> he's truly the, the wizard of Oz of League of Legends characters. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the room glaive. <laughs> yep. Once again. His team's like, come back. He's like, I can't. I don't know how it works. Riot Games. You can't just call Shen a ninja and then make, and then we pretend he's a ninja. He's clearly not a ninja. I refuse to pretend that. We've always you, refused you can't, to pretend that, You though. can't just tell me that, that Echo is a time traveler when he doesn't travel in time. You can't tell me that Bard collects things. Where, oh, wait. He collects chimes. You can't tell me <laughs> that, that Bard cares about anybody when he clearly doesn't. Why is he a support if he clearly cares about no one in his cinematic? <laughs> That's my question. He's only there to drop by and, and take some items and then... Peace out. Peace out, That's too. It. Who knows where? Back to his apartment somewhere, you know? I think that Bard should have a mechanic that once he buys a certain amount of items, he just disappears from the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, my job here is done. I must go. My people need me. Yep. What if he could like go to other maps in League of Legends and like bring back items that would be overpowered in Summoner's Rift? <laughs> like give them to your teammates or just use them yourself? That'd be fun. Crew Tiger's taking a fourth dragon and it looks like Anarchy may go for a Baron here. Wow, they're gonna go on to Smeb. Trying to catch him. There's Equalizer used, Zonia's as well. Oh Burning my. Mickey, wow. There goes Smeb, but man, Mickey took a lot of damage and is that enough to prevent Anarchy from getting this Baron? Yeah, it is. Yeah, they can try. They probably have to go for it, honestly, or at least make some sort of play onto it. They're going to take the crab just to make sure they have vision. Mickey and Iksu going to recall Iksu back in base, waiting for a home guard teleport. That's right. Smeb is back up in 30, though, and he has TP, so it's going to be very difficult for them to actually do a Baron right now. Oh, Rumble's still on fire. Did you see that? It's horrifying. <laughs> The burning a corpse of, of, of a Yordle. That's right. Looks like a dead Jawa. <laughs> After C3PO threw him in the pile. Oh, never mind. Gorilla. 
little bit of trouble. Exhaust on to Kuro, and here comes Maokai from the back line, zoned by the parallel convergence. Grill trying to get away. True Shot Barrage comes through. There's the stun from the gravity field. Kuro getting a lot of damage up, and here comes Snowfire with a nice combo. Gorilla tries to back off away, and Mickey manages to pick off one kill, but Kuro, in response, takes out two of Anarchy, two for Smeb as well. That's gonna be a clean ace, a triple kill for Kuro, as Ku goes right onto this Baron. Yeah, Smeb revived in the middle of that team fight, yep. instantly used his teleport to get in, and you can see that Leandre is doing so much work on this Rumble. He's got a ton of magic penetration, too. So let's take a look at how this goes down. Five seconds until Smeb comes back up. Hojin zones out Mickey on the side. And again, Anarchy walking into a choke against the Victor. Just not going to work. Ixu gets sucked into the middle and stunned by that gravity field. Kuro, they try to go on him. Gorilla is there to block a lot of that damage. And the Twisted Advance just not enough. And here comes Smeb as part of that cleanup crew. Yep. Easily burning through multiple members. And there it goes. Easy inhibitor for Kuro and the rest of the Ku Tigers. Yep, Baron straight into the middle inhibitor. There's no chance for a defense. Everybody on Anarchy already dead. That's right. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> this is a very different version of the great Muppet adventure that I'm used to. Much more violent. That's right. Much more bloodthirsty. You didn't see the Muppet movie where Kermit was covered in blood? No, I did not see that. The one. blood of his enemies. What was the name of that one called? <laughs> Braveheart. Oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Muppet Massacre. The, the Great Muppet <laughs> Massacre. <It's a laughs> Somebody don't think that would have gotten through the quality control there. Have the alternate Kermit song. It's not easy being red. <laughs> it's not easy being covered in the blood of your enemies. <laughs> yeah. Kermit the Barbarian. Played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, uh, a bit of a seed. Oh, Mickey gets very, very low. There's a Brahmalt. Zone is used. Mystic Shot does not find his target. They're going to go back in, grow a little bit low. Ku Tigers may have overstepped just slightly. They take out Mickey, but Anarchy coming in hard onto this Ku team. And wow, double kill for Smab, turning it right around again. Anarchy has to back away. Snowflower comes in to try to make a play once more, but Song Yoon gets taken out. A double kill for Bang. And here and we go. The GG. super minions already on the Nexus turrets. Lyra, the last man alive. Nothing he can do about this one. Four seconds. What not going to be lived? enough. So yeah, somehow Smeb <laughs> lived, and that's it. So Ku Tigers, a pretty exciting game. 31 kills make that 32 kills <laughs> to end it. And Ku Tigers take game one. GG. Yeah, Ku. In control of that game from start to finish. Played around Mickey's TF very nicely. Anarchy couldn't get rolling with the split push that has brought them that limited amount of success. And Hi Ho, I'm here to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, Ku Kermit's right there. Good impression. Thanks no, for stopping well by Kermit. I gave him the microphone for a second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Victory for the Ku Tigers. Yeah, it's a pretty average day. Anarchy right now, at least in terms of winning strategies. Strategies we have seen them actually take games with. Yeah. Not too many. Few and far between. As we move into picks and bans for game number two, there is a Victor ban, of course. No surprise. Uh, this time, of course, we are in the land of Callista nerfs on 5.13, but it has still been banned in every single game tonight. Yep. So nothing really changing there. Even though Kulet and Anarchy have Callista uh, in their last meeting, didn't really seem overly concerned with it, even when it was more powerful. Hmm. I thought maybe they would do the same tonight, just get, the, get them to first pick it and then do something else. So Fizz ban comes through. That says... Uh, I wonder who wants to pick a first pick Maokai. Maybe not a first pick Maokai, but that's a bit of a surprise to me because Ixu likes to play Fizz in the top lane. That was Rise Ban. So apparently, he doesn't like to be Fizz as much as he likes to be alive. Fair enough. I, I can I can sympathize with that <laughs> sentiment, Dylan. Yeah. I was just being alive over playing Fizz. 
So what are we going to see? They banned out Gragas in the first game, but they're likely going to want to pick it. And TF. TF, huh? So they don't, they're actually banning a lot of the champions that they get wins with, interestingly enough. I was going to say, I mean, Kuro isn't exactly known for his fearsome TF, you know? It, it would be a very good champion for Kuro to play, though. He's the kind of player that that champion in particular would allow him to gank for Smeb, hmm. and Smeb is good enough that he can carry those games, especially if you have him on a high damage or a very uh, snowball-y top laner. Now, Snowflower did have some pretty good engages on the Alistar last game, so do you consider first picking it? Sure, Rumble. Also, potentially yeah. a very high priority pick on this patch. Ezreal as well. Ezreal as well. Uh, they could take the Kog'Maw, which was oh, okay. actually banned in that last game, so that rises in priority. Prey means he's going to be able to get the Corky, which he probably will play. No reason why he wouldn't take that champion, unless he thinks that he's got some other better match up his sleeve. And remember, too, that Gorilla has never lost a game as a pro player on Alistar. That is another undefeated champion here on the Koo Tigers. So you just think Corky Alistar is the way to go here? Hey, you could take that. That was the first round of the draft from Anarchy on Red Side last game. But you Stab's don't. Stab's rumble was crazy, though. Oh, Janna Rexai. I was not expecting that, though. So they're trying to shut down ways to protect the Corky, which is why they're going to early pick the Janna, I think. Okay. And also, if they want to go later on for a Corky Ezreal composition, they have a lot of peel. So mm. that's actually a very smart first pick, depending on how they want to play out the rest of this draft. And remember that the Koo Tigers have always been a team that is very good at kiting. Kite comps brought them a lot of success in the spring. They still have a strong record on that, so Lyra may be playing the Evelyn just to get a flank, but they are going to be detected by that Rek'Sai. Yeah. Maybe will be the Eve. Now, do you still go for, like, a Lulu and protect the Cog? Guess not. I might just grab Brom Ezreal. Hmm. Oh, Zed is still available for Mickey, too. That's true. I think they will be taking that Ezreal. Now, yep. Mickey hasn't had a large degree of success on that champion. Now, the problem is, if they don't take the Maokai now, you don't have to take the Braum because that Janna is definitely going support. And now they have a chance just to take the Ezreal without any real, or the Maokai without any real threat from the Fizz. Yeah. And that is a potent counter pick to a Runeglaive Ezreal in the mid lane. Or just, you know, Velka's Twitch. Could is, go for, is Koo going to style here? Are they going to try? Nah, this is much better. I mean, Rumble is a strong pick, too. You could just drop that Equalizer and make it so that Ezreal doesn't have a great way to consistently put out damage. Yeah. Just zone him off your front line. You know, it's important, too, for, for uh, Koo Tigers to get the 2-0 here as well, because they are in second place. KT was closer than they are now after their loss today against SK Telecom, but it's still a situation where over the next few weeks, those points could matter, so might as well go for the 2-0. Yeah, especially when the Koo KT match is coming up, so yeah. that could change quite a bit. Absolutely. Well, that Ezreal might end up being something else, so maybe a topless auger? Yep. All right. But it is a Ignite in the top lane right now. Ixu has switched his summoner spells around. So could be a Hecarim. Uh, well, if it's Maokai, he's probably going to be switching away from that Ignite. Then. Yes, yes, he will. And, and that is exactly what he will do, Dara. Yes. So there we go. Maokai locked in. So they've got a lot of protection for this poke composition, strong front line. Well, speaking of poke, it might just be the Varus for Kuro then. Going poke versus poke. Oh boy. It's going to be a long laning phase, won't it? Well, the Varus has been one of Kuro's more successful champions, and he will have that earlier power spike compared to the Ezreal. Of course, both of them are going to be building tier, but. Oh, well, Ezreal won't be, but the, the Varus will be building tier. But even so, because his auto attacks are going to be stronger early in the game, that does make it. He can also shoot the piercing arrow through the minion waves while Ezreal, can, his Q will stop. So you've got to hide behind the minions, try and trade effectively with something that goes through the wave. 
as opposed to what Mickey has, and you have significantly better early wave clears. So, makes sense. Koo just going with a pretty standard Koo comp. They have a lot of poke here. They've got good backline threat. They have the peel with the Janna. So, Anarchy, they're going to take a, a bit of time to scale on the Ezreal and the Kog'Maw too. So, Koo could just take this one in the mid game, get that big siege damage advantage. Well, that's a big worry if you're Rebels Anarchy. You know, how do you stop the continuous pushing from the Koo Tigers? Well, you have the Braum, which is nice because you'll be able to stop some of the poke and maybe shield off those turrets so that they can't push like you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I think that it was a bit cocky for Koo to let Mickey have the Ezreal because if it goes late, Anarchy's going to be in a great position. There's not enough damage for them to really easily take out the Maokai in the late game. So that could prove problematic. The Koo Tigers need to start strike early and hard. That's right. We'll see if they can do it and take the 2-0. It's time to get in the game. What could be our final game of the night and see what happens. Let's get in the game. All right. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. Some Anarchy fans out there, somewhere. Well, we will see if they are indeed fighting, Dilla. Well, they'll be fighting. The question is, will they be winning any of those fights? <laughs> that's, a, that's a thing. Okay, interesting draft. I mean, I like Anarchy's composition. I think it's a, it's a nice comp to be using here. If you can win some of these games, if you can get that advantage and try and drive it home. Yep. Gorilla going with Hextech Jano, which is the skin that Korean Jano players apparently prefer. No Fanatic Jana. Sometimes. That's the other one we see a decent amount. Wolf plays Fanatic Jana a lot. Yeah. We even saw TPA Shen. It's a throwback. Not as much as a throwback of, of Fanatic uh, as Fanatic <laughs> Jana. That's true, too. You know what's funny about the uh, Fanatic Gragas skin where, where he uh, carries the Summoner's Cup? What? That that trophy was not at the Season 1 Many World Championship. It's true. That had not been made yet. And you can't fill that with liquid. It would just, like, fall out when you threw it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I think what we actually learned is that the Summoner's Cup, inside, there must be a lot of beer. Inside the, inside the silver. It's not inside the basin. It's just a beer pinata, if you will. I'd like to think that at some point that was true. <laughs> Oh, here comes Gorilla. To be annoying. He's so good at that. That's right. Get all that sweet gold. Oh, yeah. Is that Spell Thief's Edge? Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, wow. He just burns the Ignite on the Lyra just to try to mess up his jungling even more. Yeah, Ixu getting quite low, too. So Gorilla having a very successful little bout of harassment. Don't come back. Anarchy decides to go over there. Meanwhile, we did see that Song Yun and Snowflower took the Gromp, which means that they're not going to get a freeze in the top side, and that is not going to be true of Ku. So Ku should have some nice, a nice amount of comfort here. I wonder if Anarchy will give Maokai the blue buff. The answer is no. Maokai is just going to recall without the blue buff yeah, and try there. and break this freeze early. Yeah, luckily. Gorilla was around to make sure no gank was able to happen onto Kuro, and Samab already getting poked up pretty hard by Sangyun. Yeah, is Which going to expect. be able to farm some of these minions with his harpoon, and he's not going to have to be worrying too terribly much because it looks like the wave will be pushing back in his general direction eventually. Gorilla just here to give some extra comfort and allow Smeb some more time just to push up, get some CS with that flame spitter. Ixu now down in the bottom side. Looks like he's doing just fine against the Corky with no one else on that portion of the map. Yep. Lyra coming by the top side, but he's really not going to find any opportunities to do anything. Just putting the ward down, I guess. Huh. Yeah, well, with Anarchy so far pushed up, you don't want to have them opened up for a Rek'Sai tunnel gank where you can just walk by the try, tunnel behind the wall, and then pop up behind you. Yep. It's been known to happen. Both mid laners actually going for... Wow, nice Q from Kuro. Yeah, the... Uh, the uh, flask this game and that's that's the thing is that Mickey is just 
going to be taking more damage. Much easier for Kuro to trade, but again, it's an issue of scaling. That Varus does fall off, and against so many tanky champions, once Evelyn and uh, Maokai get a bit of armor and Snowflower has that unbreakable, Kuro and Prey are going to be pretty darn useless when it comes to the late game. If that Varus gets rolling, though, we've seen it do pretty amazing things, such as Faker doing more damage than the entire enemy team combined on Varus. Well, that is... That, that happened is, more than once. Oh, yeah. With that, different players. It's definitely... If you, you can definitely get that way, but you have to win the game pretty early. Lyra's been standing in this brush forever, just watching Rek'Sai go back and forth, get some wards down in his jungle. Hojin oh, now suspects. Yeah, they're going to try something. There's the slow, there's the Q, and they can't quite finish him off, but they do force him back to his own home base pretty soon, probably. And Mickey walking forward right now sees Kuro is starting to run out of mana. No more mana potions for Kuro either. That does hurt a bit. Yeah, he's going to have to burn that flask if he really wants to. Get a little bit of mana from the biscuit, but not a whole lot to speak of. But now the CS lead really opening up for Smeb on the top side of the map. Uh, Hojin gets some more intel deep into the enemy territory. He does get seen by the wolf spirit, so has to back out. And Mickey starting to... Uh, Starting to do some work right here, using that smite just to push this minion wave forward. Hopefully, uh, or hoping rather, that Kuro can lose some of this CS. She does. Yep. A little bit of a lead early on for Mickey. Aha. The battle of the skill shots. Hojin wins that one. And he's clearing out immediately, getting that. Raptor buff, and so one of the wards neutralized from Snowflower. Smeb playing pretty far back, and now Ixu catching right back up in terms of CS because there's no one up there right now to help Smeb get close to that minion wave. Gorilla on a warding mission, and now Ixu. Oh, Prey made it in, and Lyra right there to try to get the kill. They don't secure it, but they do make Prey burn both of his summoners. Yeah, he thought he was going to be okay because Gorilla was wrapping around the back side of that lane, but they didn't have enough respect for the Evelyn standing in the lane, so that'll be a, some nice peace of mind for Ixu when it comes to safely laning. Yeah, gonna use the chance to go back, I guess. Those tiny wings Varus has look pretty useless. Don't think they work very well. Well, he can fly a little bit. He does in his recall animation. They look more like those like little like wings you wear if you like go to raves or something like that. You see sometimes, you know. I do know. Oh, blocked. Shut down. That's right. So first back right now for Mickey, and he will be. What will he buy first? He will be buying. Interesting. He will not be buying a Ranger's Trailblazer. He is going for kill pressure in yeah. lane with a Chilling Smite. Against Averis, that seems like a pretty good choice. Yeah, don't have that mobility, even though Kuro is running the heal, so he does have a bit more speed as a result of that choice. I mean, it does present a bit of a risk for Mickey in that without the wave clear, he had better get some kills. Otherwise, his turret is not going to last long, and you don't want to give Ku that mid-game advantage. That's right. I do think that's very ri risky. Um, but it could pay off because he's not going to have as much control over the lane, which means that Kuro will push forward, and then that Chilling Smite becomes useful as kill pressure because Kuro will have so far to go down the lane. Yeah. But ultimately, uh, when it comes to clearing the waves, if he doesn't get that true shot barrage off cooldown frequently, there could come a point where the Varus and the Corky Siege at about 20 minutes could really, really do a lot of damage. True enough. Kuro is nearly caught up in CS. Not too far down anymore. Yeah, I'm really curious to see if Mickey can actually make this work. It's it's a bold move, and I suppose bold moves are the kind of the order of business right now. Well, and if but Mickey can still. get fed, he can absolutely take over this game. Yeah. So I think it's a it's an interesting risk worth taking. Is <laughs> try buff? to steal the blue buff. Uh, he did not. Oh, did he get it? I, I couldn't tell. He, uh, yeah, he did get it. No, or yep. did he get that one? I have no idea. Somebody got it somewhere. 
Oh, Kuro doesn't have his, no. so I think he did get it. No, it's still there, as we can see. The blue oh. buff has spawned, so... It is. Not going to... I think it was just a bit of a mistiming. I guess so. The blue buff had not yet spawned. Picked me up. I, Hojin was coming from the camp, so I thought he had just done it or something like that, or just been doing it. No, he got chunked, though, which is which is nice. But against Rek'Sai, not going to be the biggest deal in the world. Can just go ahead and heal up with the passive. I guess Rek'Sai goes underground where... She eats a lot of healing worms. Healing worms, mm -hmm. high in protein <laughs> and other delicious nutrients. You know, maybe it's just magical dirt. Some magical dirt. I wonder how Rek'Sai moves better underground in solid dirt and rock than she does above ground. I don't know. Oh, two shot barrage, not really connecting with anyone. Rek'Sai appears to be like the queen of, of moving underground. You know? I don't know. She makes tunnels, though. Not so when she's normally some sort of display. Oh, yeah, you're right. That. Maybe that's why she doesn't go all the way underground, you know? It's I all prefer, the farther she can manage. I prefer to think that Rek'Sai is some, some sort of dirt jet engine where she just <laughs> opens her mouth and it just comes out the other end. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, no wonder no wonder the grass is so fertile on Summoner's Rift. I think Snowflower stole that Krug, too. He did. Well, he stole his own Krug, rather. He denied the Krug. That's right. Lyra really wants this kill. Yep. On to Smeb, and it's not too hard to get it when you have that Maokai. But Smeb has Equalizer, and he has Flash still. Maybe a little bit problematic. They certainly don't have that same kill pressure that they had in their last game. Yeah, and Smeb, not overheated or anything at the moment. Yeah, they're just going to give that one up. It's interesting. We haven't seen very much Kuro. or We've seen a lot of Kuro. We haven't seen very much Varus recently. Mm -hmm. um, and the one game we saw of Jace since those changes were made to his kit uh, didn't end up well for CJ, and sure, part of that was them playing with subs, but it just seems like teams have really been able to turtle well enough and have enough wave clear to go into the late game where he's just not, these poke champions, especially the AD poke champions, are just not as much of a threat. Yeah. Now, Runeglaive acquired for Mickey now. And who's going to go after this first dragon? Who could push the lanes if they wanted to? Although Song Yun obviously was some good wave clear bottom. Yeah, he does, and that's a even after six. You know, before six, Kogma has a, that preferable matchup versus the Corky, and after six, he's got just as much poke as Corky does, so it can be a little bit tricky to get Corky even post six, where he normally shines an advantage in that matchup. Yeah, Mickey getting poked pretty hard, too, so he's got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, the problem, too, with running that Chilling Smite is you don't have that same level of sustain that you would have with the Ranger's Trailblazer. Yeah. Which is actually a big factor because Ezreal is a very squishy champion. Oh, well, Snowflower that, trying to save his ward. Hojin decides he doesn't really want to commit to that one. Doesn't know where Lyra is. Yeah, does they, now. They don't have a ton of ton of wards in their jungle just yet. Even less now. Now more. <laughs> Thanks for the warding update. You're welcome. Uh, less, more, less, I'll, more, uh, less, more. I'll give you a second by second update on the number of wards in the jungle. Now less. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kuro doing exactly what we were worried about seeing for Mickey this game. Mickey not, you know, no wave clear, no sustain, so Curl just pushing up and poking the turret. And with the vision that they've got, there wasn't really a lot of a threat from ganking. Nope. Not really any at all, as a matter of fact. So we're approaching Trinity Force time for both of our teams. Prey up in the laning phase, despite having to play under his turret for a large majority of this lane they're, they're just going to check it with a prey seeker make sure there isn't an eve there while they push up the wave so that they can recall yep well, mickey just trying to save his turret trying to do what he can i always wondered with john's like shield of air 
on Corky. Wouldn't that just mess up with the mess with the aerodynamics of the uh, of the you know whatever he's flying on and just make him crash immediately? Probably. I mean, I can only assume that having the solidified air around him would actually mean that he could not stay aloft any longer. There would be no lift to the right. wings. That's right. Unless the shield also gives it to you, but that'd be a bit excessive. I don't know. John is pretty good at propelling gravity with enough air. I suppose. By the way, if Anna, if Jonna was actually able to hover in place by, like that by blowing air downwards, she would have some sort of, it would literally take like a small jet engine to keep her aloft <laughs> like that, which means she would be leaving this giant trail of destruction oh, behind oh, her. Oh, and the ult comes in. Kuro knocked up a little bit. There's the equalizer from Smeb, though. They're going to take out the turret. No kills yet, but about as close as it can get. Well, a huge amount of damage, too, onto several gotta be members. Gotta be careful here. Uh-oh, Kuro. Kuro in a little bit of trouble. Flashes out of the two-shot barrage, and now they're going to turn onto Lyra there. Flash knock up onto Lyra. Smab comes back in. Helps the kill get picked up. One on each side. Smab picks one up. Lyra picks one up as well. Gorilla dies for it, but he got the clutch flash tornado to actually make that play matter. That's right. All worth it. Oh, and actually, they get uh, top turret in, in uh, well, top, in top, yeah, top. It's getting late, guys. I used all my energy for the first series, sorry. Running on fumes now. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they sacrificed that. They made the conscious trade to have Smeb go into the mid lane and take out that tower. And now, they are going to have control of that center, that center of the map, but that makes of course, this Ezreal pretty vulnerable to subsequent ganks should Hojin actually manage to get behind him. This is going to be uh, one of the later first dragons we've seen in a game recently, too. Yes, absolutely it will be. 16 minutes and still no real moves towards it by either team. Just wards. Very calm play for the two Tigers. And they're at a gold deficit right now. They need to do something about this game, or the Runeglaive Ezreal Kogba combo is going to get out of control. Yeah. Uh, they haven't really done enough yet to justify their team composition. They've traded evenly in terms of turrets. They need to start getting dragon stacks ASAP because they really want to be threatening four and five dragons before it gets too late in this game. Did they see Lyra go into that brush? with the ward. I'm not so sure. And no. will it finally be dragon time? Yeah, they wouldn't have seen that, but they are going oh. to push forward now that the minion wave has been Anarchy shoved is in right the there. Now, it's my best TP. So they're going to look for poke now. Not quite going to land the piercing arrow onto Mickey. It's close. But while they're doing this, Ixu is wasting a lot of time on the bottom side. He has to be here because he has no teleport. But that means that Smeb is going to get a lot of time onto the top lane tower as long as Ku can just maintain their current positioning, position threatening that dragon. Well, they're going to give it up for the moment, but coming back down through their jungle now. Yeah, Anarchy has to start this dragon. They don't have a choice, even though they yep. don't have the speed shrine. That's right. Will we see Smeb come in, or are they just going to take the top lane turret? Kuro back doing, like, blue, blue or bomb. wolves or something. Yeah, he needs to get there, I feel like. Yep. Oh, here he comes now. Fires a Q through the team. Not bad. Teleport coming in. Smeb is going to be on the scene. Meanwhile, Ixu gets into the back lines. A lot of damage onto Kuro. They pop that summoner heal. Now the heal from Gorilla helping out a lot. Even despite the L from Lyra, they're going to take him down. Anarchy trying to make something happen. Mickey manages to snipe Hojin. Dragon taken by Ku during all this, too. Prey goes in. Double kill for Mickey now. Oh, Prey. That and was Anarchy. a terrible Triple battery. kill. Oh, man. He just went straight into the crowd control from Anarchy. Witness me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Some really bad Valkyries tonight from a couple yep. of Corkies. I kind of expect that from Arrow, but I do not expect that from Prey. Really surprising that he thought he was going to be able to make that work. <laughs> and now Ku in. They did steal the dragon. They got yeah. that. So Hojin was able to get the smite off. But... Whoa, whoa, that's a lot of damage. Even so, giving the Runeglaive Ezreal a triple kill, really a bad plan. 
So yeah. as we see right here, uh, Hojin gets around the side, wins the smite battle, and then, I mean, Smeb's there. They got an equalizer down. They're able to get a kill. And at this point, if you're, look at look at this coup. They can just go bottom and kill that tower immediately. There's nothing Anarchy can do. They have a mini <laughs> Now, why you would do that instead of walking bottom to kill a turret is a mystery. Mediocre. Uh, and Mickey really coming up big with three kills in that TP. fight, too. Yeah, they're going to try to make a play on the Ku's bot lane here. Ray could be in trouble. They're going to dive the turret with Sangin right there as well. It's going to be easy. Lyra picks one up, and now they're going to get the turret as well. This is not going well for the Ku Tigers. They picked a risky composition. What, what can I say? They didn't hit their power spike, or they haven't hit it yet, and they're already behind. How do you beat this? insanely good late game team comp from Anarchy. Or Anarchy, they simply are not going to have the damage to kill Ixu. Yeah. It's about as bad as it gets right now. Could get worse, I suppose. They could be knocking on your Nexus. Oh, hello, Mickey with the Zonias after Arcane shifting into a dangerous spot. No more CC though, Mickey fighting. Tries to go after Gorilla, Gorilla fails his flash. Here comes Snowflower and Mickey picks up another one. Okay, it's worse. It's definitely worse right now. Now uh, Gorilla- Mickey's gonna kill Kuro. Oh, oh here comes Snap though. Arcane shift over the wall, they're gonna chase him. Prey comes in for some revenge. <laughs> He's like, how do you like my Valkyrie now? <laughs> Well, they've got to take something off this, though, because trading yeah. one for one. Gorilla did all he could right there. He tried. He's also not running exhaust, which is very interesting. All right, so there's Equalizer on the Ixu. He's going to flash over the wall, and it's a little bit dangerous to chase. So can they turn this into a top lane turret? They've got the wave already prepped there. Uh, Corky has the damage necessary to take it out. They already chunked out Ixu. Mickey is dead. And they are going to be going for that objective in the top side, Smep. Coming up to help out with Prey. And there you go, enough wave clear, at least for the moment. Yep. Should be okay, still a decent amount of damage to that turret though. Oh, Kuro actually burned his ult and he didn't manage to hit Ixu with it. Oops, oh, True Shot Barrage flashes. That was a close call. I'd trade a True Shot Barrage for a flash any day though. Still Absolutely. a big win for Anarchy. And you take away their wave clear from the mid lane too. So Kuro has to back off. Prey was already back at base now. They're not going to shove forward any further. The Ku Tigers, they do take a tower. Lyra wants to get a blue buff, but that's not really going to be feasible. Mickey doesn't have a true shot barrage to actually finish it off from long range. The goal is fairly even, but this is definitely a messy one. Not the greatest game we've seen from the Ku Tigers this season. Well, there's a reason why Oh. We don't see that wow. much Varus anymore. So much damage. And we see teams taking the targeted CC against the Runeglaive Ezreal. And remember, Viz was banned this game. Yeah. Ku had every opportunity to opt into Maokai. Could have taken the Ezreal themselves as well, too. They're going to find Snowflower in the river, though, and Kuro's going to be able to pick, a ki pick up a kill that way. So nice grab by the Ku Tigers. And now a lot of pressure coming into mid lane. They have to make or this not. work. I mean, there goes the minion wave. Yep. Interesting that Mickey did pick up the Zonia's Hourglass. We saw Faker getting the, the Luden's Echo second in that game. But, you know, honestly, if Mickey can, first off, the armor very good against the Varus, clearly. Uh, but if Mickey can survive the Equalizer or a Chain of Corruption with the Zonia's, then what else is going to kill him? There's nothing. Stace is very valuable against this team that relies on landing an equalizer to actually kill him. Yeah, pretty much. Dragon in about 40 seconds now. And Ku Tigers, again, really needs to get this to keep any sort of momentum on their side in this game. They've already pretty much lost it. But if they get that second dragon, maybe they can get a little bit back. They have to get it. I mean, yeah. if they don't get it, it is an unmitigated disaster. There's nothing else that they will be really able to do to affect the tempo of this game, barring they just get some miracle picks. But even then, it's a far cry probably from what they need. If they can get a pick and turn it into a Baron, maybe, but it's all 
sort of misplaced from Anarchy at that stage. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that is one of Ku's hopes, I suppose, is that even though Anarchy is so strong in the late game, they still have the bigger chance of making an error. That's definitely true. We know the Ku Tigers have some pretty decent shot calling. <laughs> well, gee, where do you think they are? Hard to do this against the Kog'Ma. Yep, that's why. Especially after he gets level two in his ult, it's just off cooldown so frequently. Ku trying to hold. They are succeeding, at least for the moment, but this game is spiraling out of control for them and into the hands of Anarchy. Yep, Dragon to spawn. And so if somebody's gonna make a move for it, it's gonna be now. Lyra takes a bit of poke from the piercing arrows, but they do manage to clear some wards. Oh, that was a nice arrow. That helped. Shabraj used though, big chunk taken out of Gorilla again. So vulnerable to this Ezreal. Yeah, but Anarchy's already been heavily poked out. Yeah. So can they actually follow up with a dragon attempt? There is no true shot barrage for a little bit. So no dragon attempt from Anarchy. Crew actually going back right there. Yeah, well, he's got a little bit of time now. Goes back, picks up the, I believe it was the last whisper, maybe the brutalizer. Didn't quite see. Interesting that Mickey, uh, has Max's E second, so he's actually lacking a bit of poke damage that he would normally have with his W. Hmm. Huh. I mean, do you get a little bit more damage out of the yeah, but you're using shot that comes out of the E? Yeah, but you're using that so defensively most of the time. That uh, could be, yeah. Now comes the Luden's Echo for Mickey just nearly finishing that item off. Yep. And no one wants to take the dragon. And you know what, Anarchy's fine with this. Longer that it takes for Ku to actually threaten five dragons, which is now at this point going to be epically late in the game. It's not really going to matter. Yeah. Wow, still nice poke from Kuro. He's been able to do a lot of damage. They just can't seem to find those team fights, so. No, they can't get there quite yet. Yeah. But they... they got to defend this turret, though. Just wait. It's all Anarchy has to do. They will be the king of the poke war in the end. They will have the better front line. Bob just going right onto this dragon. Prey is right there, though. They could take a lot of damage. Equalizer comes out, pushes Anarchy back. There's Kuro, gets the ultimate off. That helps quite a bit. Twist advance back onto Prey, but they're going to take out Ixu so fast. True Shot Barrage did a ton of damage. And Ku backing off for the moment. Snowflower nearly picked off by that piercing arrow. Mickey still being a big threat here as Ku goes for their second dragon. Song Yun can poke as well. Ku manages to muscle their way in and get that second dragon. Well, Varus is still in the middle of a power spike right now. And Anarchy, they committed to doing the dragon before they won the poke war. And that equalizer just did so much damage with the Leandries. Well, they're going to get a turret out of this as well, too. Wow. Ku. Uh, I'm not. I'm still not certain this is going to be enough to actually make sure that they get a win in this game because it's still a very scant gold lead. Yeah, the two dragons do help. The turrets help, but it could go so wrong at any time. And TP has to be used to save the mid lane tower. Not really an ideal situation. Now you're going to give Ixu some more freedom to where he goes on the map. And you're actually going to have to start using the wreck side probably to push back minion waves. With Dragon just being taken out, is it is it that big of a deal to give up the teleport? Well, there's no Dragon to take from it, but you could certainly get a lot of kills if you're Anarchy and maybe take a Baron as a result. It's could be that point in the game. You have a Kog'Maw with the Blade of the Ruined King. You're going to do that Baron extremely rapidly. So Ku is just committing to play defensively, but that is not the strength of their composition. Well, it looks like for now they're starting to push a little bit anyway. But they can only play the top side of the map around Smeb. Yeah. So they have to group with this five and siege and make sure that they get good flank wards down, which is something that they sort of failed to do in their last match against SK Telecom. Looks like they're going to try to give up their tier two and top lane for maybe their tier one in mid, which would be a pretty nice trade to make. All right, so is Ixu going to come in with the big engage? He's already recalling. He has home guard. 
Shabraj used this turret, though, taking a lot of damage, and there's still more minions. Here we go. Meanwhile, the flank coming in from Anarchy. They take out the turret. Maokai coming from behind. Snowflower there as well, too. Slowed down by the Hail of Arrows. Hojin goes underground. Ixu tries to get in there. Nice equalizer, and Ku protected with that ultimate, starting to do a lot of poke damage. A kill for Smeb already. Big arrow comes through and hits Mickey. Prey comes in for the kill onto Ixu, and Ku chasing this one. Songyun very low as well, too, so somehow, some way, Ku Tigers still landing enough poke damage to win these team fights. The Tigers got so kited, uh, well, the, uh, I mean, uh, they kited blah, blah, blah. well. Yeah, Anarchy got so kited out of that engagement. Now, what we saw was Anarchy trying to get the flank, but Ku read it really nicely. They had the necessary wards and information, so they may actually get a Baron off of it right now. Oh, here it comes. Your shot barrage a little bit late, and Ku Tigers will be able to take the Baron as well. So a turret kills the Baron. Ku Tigers suddenly jumping out to a lead that they desperately needed. Yeah, and that that engage was not well coordinated by Anarchy either. Yeah. Ku intelligently backing off and turning onto the Maokai. You did not see Mickey or Sangyu there to deal any damage before a lot of members of Anarchy had already sustained a huge amount of poke. Now they have the Baron, now they're in the position where they may actually be able to make a siege that breaks the base here at 30 minutes. So Ku, I mean, they, they have that good shot calling. They act very well as a unit in tough strategic situations, and they managed to pull it off here. Yeah, and I mean, this is the kind of the big danger for Anarchy as well, too, is that even though their composition might have all these edges, there's still the quote-unquote, you know, rookie team coming into this. Well, the idea was good there from Anarchy, right? It's just the execution was off. And that's what's so hard is making these flank attacks and these pincer attacks at the proper time for everybody so you get the Maokai in right as you're dealing the, the damage from your carries. Right. And in this case, Ku is just very decisive about how they turn the flank. It was a huge minion wave. Yeah, and they're going to ride it right into the base as well, too. It's poke versus poke. We'll see who comes out on top. Those Baron minions are going to do a lot of work, though. Nice block for Snowflower. He's going to have a lot of work to do to prevent this from coming in. Two shot barrage does a good job. Uh, Kuro actually gets shielded by Gorilla to take away the bite from the True Shot Barrage. Uh, trying to retreat. They want to take a tier two. They may have realized that it might be overly difficult to crack the base right now. Smeb returns to start trimming this top wave as his teleport comes up. They can just keep these lanes pushed too because Dragon is coming up in a minute and as long as they can have enough comfortable room to fall back and take their third Dragon, they don't really necessarily need much more than that off of this Baron buff. Yeah, they're still, they still have to be worried. They're not ahead enough that this composition is a, not a threat from Anarchy. Still an uphill battle for Ku. Of course, yeah. One good true shot barrage through the squishy members of Ku and everything could change. I'm actually surprised that Kuro has been delaying both a Bloodthirster and a Hex Drinker, instead going for the completion on the Yomu's Ghost Blade Just because... really wants that damage. I mean, the Hex Drinker would be very helpful. The Overshield from the Bloodthirster in conjunction with the Sustain would be very helpful to him. But that's defensive, man. You get a Yomu's and you just go for it. They're going to have to change the name to Yolomu's. <laughs> it's actually a good name for that <laughs> item. Yolomu's. Yolomu's Ghostblade. Well, oh, Dragon up now, and Ku Tigers can take it very comfortably. Yep, Smeb. Going through the jungle. Going to try and take a blue buff while he's at it. Uh, no TP for Ixu, so there's not really a great answer. Good wards from the Tigers at the top, and that is going to be uh, Dragon number three. Yeah, they've got that little speed boost now, which is going to be even more uh, TP, useful. TP, TP, Oh, oh, where are they going? Yeah, going to mid lane, trying to go after Lyra and Songyun. Can they catch him? Doesn't look like it. Oh, but they did catch Snowflower, though, and Kuro should be able to get a kill even with that ultimate used. Yep, goodbye. <laughs> Zoned by the Prey Seeker. Right into the waiting arrows of Kuro. The Snowflower Seeker. That's right. Oh, that actually, Tree Shot Barrage didn't do as much as Anarchy would have liked, but with Ku having the Baron buff fall off, now they invested a lot in that TP. So 
They did, but again, the dragon is down, so it's not quite as vital as it would have been before, you know? They're always, like, using the TP for some sort of aggressive or maintenance sort of play right after they take the dragon if they don't need it for that, you know? Well, they have had a lot of pressure with that Baron, too, so that yeah. certainly changes things. And what is Ku's game plan now? They don't really have much on the map to take. They could try and set up for a follow-up Baron in a couple of minutes and see if they can land that poke first. Uh, it looks like Gorilla is going to be going probably for a second Aegis here. Doubling down on that item. He certainly needs some magic resist as one of the squishier members of the team. Finally, Kuro moving towards the Bloodthirster, so at least he has some sustain with the Vamp Scepter right now. Prey also probably looking to get Bloodthirster and then a Banshee's Veil in this game in particular. Right. Wow, Ku just has a lot of map control right now, but it's it's amazing just how many wards Anarchy has been able to get out on the map, although I think they're all about to expire, some of the deeper ones. Yeah, they are not likely to last very long in any case as Ku starts peppering the Baron area. Sunflower's had some weird unbreakables this game. They're I know, yeah. Been <laughs> quite at the right angle. He's not as adept a Braum player as some other players we have seen in this league. I guess so. He's missed a couple of those. I wonder if he's got it on SmartCast or something like that. It's probably not a good way to use that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, yeah. Because he's, he's messing it up so consistently, you know? I mean, yeah, you can get it up faster with SmartCast, of course, but you also have a, a good chance of just accidentally having your mouse cursor in the wrong place. All right, Ixu maybe wants to find a flank again. He only has a couple viable wards to TP to. Ixu's going to see him coming from a mile away. I think a good tip with using that ability on Braum is to not like try to click right in front of Braum where you want to aim the shield, but just click on the person that's shooting it at you. Because then it'll put it up right the right angle. There you go. Okay. Braum tips. And then your mouse cursor is always in the right place to shoot a Q at him too. Oh, flash. Ooh. Oh, Prey takes a big damage. A big damage <laughs> from, from that two-shot barrage. Grammar escapes me, and Anarchy does push the Ku Tigers back a little bit. They need to be careful here, too, because Baron is up in 20 seconds, and they can't afford to be poked too much. And they have much. no vision around that objective. They also have no true shot barrage anymore, and it looks like Varus and Corky will be able to heal up just a little bit off of some wards and jungle camps, but Anarchy doing a good job of repelling the siege for now. Makes sense. Oh, Mickey was... Knocked up by that whirlwind took a pretty big amount of damage. As oh, well. they found Lyra. Yeah, they did. And Ixu in a lot of trouble too. This thing, this is not looking good for Anarchy right now. Lyra over the wall. Here comes Prey. There's the equalizer, not equalizer. The Valkyrie used. I don't know. I just. It's a mini I give equalizer. Up. I give it's a, up. It's a mini equalizer, it's Noah. It's a marginalizer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mickey fleeing the fight, and with Lyra down, they're just going to go for this inhibitor. It looks like. Yeah, and Lyra made a big mistake right there. He cannot give up his uh, his positioning on this Evelyn because then Ku knows that it's perfectly safe on their flanks. Yeah. And once it's safe on their flanks, they can play a little bit more aggressively, and they catch him out. So Anarchy looked good for a lot of this game, but Ku has been able to repeatedly make picks, give Anarchy the run around the map, and get themselves a very comfortable gold lead. They're going to pick up another Baron here. Pretty easy Baron now for the Ku Tigers. Mickey, no two-shot barrage. He's trying to get there as fast as he can, as is the rest of Anarchy, but they're not going to make it in time. There's the Baron. They're going to turn right around. Verisalt did not connect. Bromalt did, but here Corky. comes Frey over the wall again. Oh, man. Frey, you are psycho today. Wow. Yeah, you have to be happy right there. You've got the Glacial Fisher out. There isn't a true-shot barrage to use. Just don't play too aggressively right after you've got the Baron and you have super minions already moving into your opponent's base. Play safe, push up the waves, close out the game in a textbook style because if you throw now, Anarchy can definitely still win this game. Oh yeah. Ray's trying. It was a nice attempt there. Valkyrie ahead, he's like, oh, nobody? Okay. It's like, uh, Prey and Oku switched bodies for a day or something. 
The old Najin sword carries. Yep. The but old if ADC switcheroo. If, if Prey's gonna play like that, he really should just buy a Leandri's Torment. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Or just play Lucian. Oh, oh some, of his, special. <laughs> some of his some uh, of his dives here and movements forward have not been ill-advised. Whether he's playing Corky or Lucian, but just go for the magic damage. That's what I say. I'm you just poke, glad. Poke people with the rockets with the Leandries, and then come in with the big mini, the big, I said, the mini equalizer that big is. Big mini equalizer. The big mini equalizer. I'm just glad he's not playing Draven. Well, everyone's glad for that, Doa. Yeah, that's true. Someday he's going to pick it again, and we'll get to laugh and shake our heads and wonder why. Why would he play the champion that he's so bad on? Siege? Coming into they the have a banner of now. command now. That is very annoying to deal with. Oh, yeah. Mickey's going to have a hard time taking that out. Uh, they did not smite the right one. Oops. Well, they did, but they needed to smite the left one. Ah. Uh, uh, wow. wow. All right. Here they go. Knock up onto Ixu. A lot of damage onto him, and that's going to be an easy turret. Oh, ultimate used again. Kuro has not been connecting with well, a lot of those various ults, but you don't need to. It's forcing the flash. It's doing what yeah. it needs to do. He would have hit it if Ixu didn't flash right there, so yeah. that's nice. Meanwhile, Banner Minion. Keeps on rolling wow. straight to the Nexus. The sixth man. Oh, goodbye, Kogma, and goodbye, hopes of victory for Anarchy. There's Azonia's Smeb blocking Ixu, trying to come in, but not a lot of damage. Mickey doing what he can, but Kuro gets a double kill at the end of all that. Nice heal from Gorilla, full channel Janna ultimate. And that is going to be it as the Ku Tigers take the 2-0 over Team Anarchy, GG. Well, that was a bit touch and go for the Tigers, but again, we've seen this from them. When it push comes to shove against every team that's not named SK Telecom, <laughs> their shot calling really can prevail Yeah. in the end. And so they take that win, a 2-0 against Anarchy. A pretty solid game for Mickey overall, too. I mean, 4-1-1 on that Ezreal, but what can you do? You need your whole team. Yeah, and there were just some very key picks that the Ku Tigers were able to translate into a couple of Barons, and, and that yeah. was it. They had to get those picks. They 